Hi, my name is Marcelo Zimmer. I'm a weed science program specialist at Purdue University with the weed science team. And today I am at the Trockmorton Purdue Agricultural Center to talk about some of the different options that we have for control of volunteer corn and enlist soybean systems and also in extend soybean systems. I'm also going to be discussing some of the antagonists that we might see with some of the other post-emergence herbicides that we may be applying tank mix with ACCA's inhibitor herbicides such as Clatodem and Kizalafop. We have known for quite a while that synthetic oxygen herbicides such as 2,4-D and Dicamba can antagonize the activity of ACCA's inhibitor herbicides on the control of grasses. However, that was generally not a problem when it came to the control of volunteer corn and soybeans because we could not spray those herbicides post-emergence to soybeans until a few years back. However, with the widespread adoption of extend and enlist soybeans across the Midwest, we're starting to have more problems with the antagonistic effects of those products, 2,4-D and Dicamba, with ACCA's inhibitor herbicides such as Clatodem, Kizalofop, Fluazifop, and Cetoxidin. One thing to keep in mind about ACCA's inhibitor herbicides is that they're going to work very slowly. In general, the plants are going to stop growing within a day after application of ACCA's inhibitor herbicide, but you're not going to see any symptoms until about five or seven days after application under ideal growing conditions. If you have stress corn or if you think makes another herbicide that may antagonize the ACCA's inhibitor herbicide that you spray, those symptoms may take a little longer to develop. But once you do start seeing those symptoms, one thing that you can see is that generally you're going to see those symptoms in the new growth. So the newer leaves, they're going to start wilting. The older leaves are largely unaffected at this point. They're still green. And if you try to pull out the, the newer leaves, they come right out of the whirl. So basically what you can see is that the, this part of the plant here that connects to the growing point is, a start to, is a starting to decompose. And that's a characteristic symptom of an ACCA's inhibitor herbicide on grasses. One factor that strongly influences the efficacy of ACCA's inhibitor herbicides on the control of volunteer corn is corn height at the time of application. The bigger the corn plants, the harder they're going to be to control with an ACCA's inhibitor herbicide. We generally like to see applications being made when corn is 12 inches or less. And, but again, we know that we understand that sometimes the weather conditions are not ideal. The field might be too wet for an application or you might be uh, spraying up multiple fields and not be able to get to that field in time. Or we also have farmers that might be wanting to do a single post-emergence application uh, when they combine all the post-emergence herbicides in one single application. Anyways, you got to keep in mind that the bigger the corn plants, the harder is going to be to control them. So you may want to adjust your ACCA's inhibitor rate according to the height of that corn that you want to control. Another factor that strongly influences the efficacy of these herbicides is uh, water stress. So if you have corn or other grasses that are stressed out because of drought, you're going to have lower activity of those ACCA's inhibitor herbicides. So if you spray under drought conditions, you may want to adjust the rate of those herbicides as well. And finally, another factor that is going to influence the efficacy of ACCA's inhibitor herbicides is what, what products you're tank mixing with those particular herbicides. If you're tank mixing uh, 2,4-D, Dicamba, Warrant, those are products that have been shown uh, to antagonize uh, ACCA's activity in some situations and that's what I'm going to be discussing with you guys today. Before we start to discuss the different interactions of ACCA's inhibitor herbicides with other post-emergence herbicides, the first thing I want to do is to give you guys an idea of the layout of these experiments. So right now I'm standing in this Enlist soybean trial. We also have an Extend soybean trial that I'm going to show you guys later. And what we did is that on May 9th, we planted those soybeans in one direction and then we planted three different corn hybrids across each single plot in this experiment. So we have a non-GMO corn hybrid, we have a Roundup Ready Liberty Link Stack corn hybrid, and we also have an Enlist corn hybrid. So the Enlist corn hybrid is going to have tolerance to glyphosate, glufosinate, and FOP herbicides such as Kizalofop and Fluazifop. The Roundup Ready Liberty Link Stack is going to have resistance to glyphosate and glufosinate, and the non-GMO corn is going to be susceptible to all these different products that I just listed. So the application of those products happen 
on June 15 for both the Enlist and the Extend trial. For the Enlist trial, we use the AI XR nozzles at 15 GPA, and for the Extend trial, we use 15 GPA, but we use a TTI nozzle as per label recommendation. And within each one of those trials, we only use one single nozzle type to make sure that the difference that we saw in control were due to uh, herbicide interactions and not due to uh, the use of different nozzle types. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, this experiment was a spray in June 15. Today is July the 2nd, so it has been about 17 days since we did the, the post-application of a CCA's herbicide to this particular experiment. The products that we sprayed in the Enlist Soybean System trial were Cletodem at 2 pound formulation at either 4 ounces or 6 ounces to the acre. We also sprayed a Sure 2 at 4 or 6 ounces to the acre. And we tried to mixes of these two different rates with Enlist 1 at 32 ounces to the acre, Roundup Power Max 2 at 32 ounces to the acre, and Liberty Link Liberty 280 at 29 ounces to the acre. So basically we wanted to see how different combinations of those herbicides would affect the activity of those ACCA herbicides. I'm not going to go over every single combination that we tested here because we have about 25 combinations tested, but I'm going to give you some of the highlights of what we saw in the field today. So for the first set of treatments here that I'm going to show you guys today, we have Cletodin at 4 ounces to the acre by itself to your left, and then we have Cletodin at 6 ounces to the acre by itself to your right. And one thing that you can see is that even with the lower rate of clatodin by itself, we got good activity of clatodin across all different so uh, corn traits. For the non-GMO, the Roundup Ready, and the Enlist corn, we got good activity even at the lower rate. And as we increase rate of clatodin by itself, we have even higher activity of this particular uh, herbicide. This next set of treatments here that we're looking at, we have Kizalafop by itself at 4 ounces to the acre to your left and Kizalafop by itself at 6 ounces to the acre by itself to your right. And we can see pretty much the same thing that we saw with the Clatodin treatments. As we increase the rate, we have slightly better activity from 4 to 6 ounces. The only difference is going to be that between Kizalafop and Clatodin is that by itself is that the volunteer corn that has the enlist rate is not going to be controlled by Kizalafop herbicides. Again, FOP herbicides such as Kizalafop and Fluazifop are not going to have activity in enlist corn. They're going to be metabolized and those plants are going to survive. So you got to know the trait of your volunteer corn when you're planning to spray a graminicide uh, in those plants. This next set of treatments that I'm standing at right now are Cletodin at 4 ounces to the acre plus Enlist 1 or 240 and to your right we have Cletodin at 6 ounces to the acre plus 240 or Enlist 1. So one thing that you can clearly see that is different from Cletodin by itself is that we have some reduction in activity of Cletodin when we make a synthetic oxen such as 240 on that application. And if you pull out one of those plants here you can see they're much greener than they were with Clatodin by itself. These plants are probably going to survive, especially at the lower rate at 4 ounces to the acre. They're going to survive and they're going to probably produce a corn ear. They're going to get in the way of harvest. So basically our application will fail in this particular scenario. When we transition to a 6 ounce rate of Clatodin, we were basically able to overcome that antagonistic effect of 2,4-D on Clatodin. These plants are still greener than I would like to see them at this point but they're very unlikely that they're going to keep going for too long and they're probably not going to produce a corn ear. The plots that we're looking at right now are 4 ounces of Kizalafol plus 2,4-D to your left and 6 ounces of Kizalafol plus 2,4-D to your right. And one thing that we can clearly notice in these two plots is that whenever we take mix 2,4-D with Kizalafol, we get a strong antagonistic effect of 2,4-D with the Kizalafol. Basically, if you look at the corn plants across different corn hybrids, they're largely unaffected by Kizalafov. You can barely tell that they got sprayed with an ACCA inhibitor herbicide at this point. So the recommendation here is if you're going to spray Kizalafov, make sure you make split applications. Don't spray with 2,4-D because the 2,4-D is going to strongly antagonize Kizalafov. 
In this enlisted experiment, we also tested the influence of glyphosate and glufosinate on the efficacy of ACCA's inhibitor herbicides. I'm not going to go over every single combination of treatments today for the sake of time, but a quick summary would be that uh, whenever we had a glyphosate or glufosinate, it helped us increase the control of non-GMO corn, and it also did not affect the control of enlist corn or uh, Roundup Ready Liberlink stack corn. So basically, those products will be safe to spray in a tank mix with an ACCA inhibitor herbicide according to the results that we've seen here in the field. 2,4-D on the other hand was very antagonistic especially to Kizalofop. He also shown some antagonism with Clatodem as well although the Clatodem was, were able to overcome that antagonistic effect by using a higher rate of Clatodem. Now we're going to move over and I'll start discussing the different treatments that we tested for the Extend soybean systems. Now we're looking at some of the highlights for the Extend Soybean trial. Uh, the first thing I would like to show you guys is that uh, here in the plot to your left, which is 4 ounces of Clatodin plus Extendimax plus uh, Roundup Powermax, the first thing that you can see is that just like 2,4-D, Dicema can also antagonize Clatodin activity. And at 4 ounces to the acre, we still see some green plants uh, 17 days after application. If you look at the plot to your right, which is 6 ounces of Clatodem plus Extending Max plus Glyphosate. Uh, basically, by increasing the rate of Clatodem, we're able to control those plants, even though there was dicamba on that tank mix as well. Now we're looking at the antagonistic effect of dicamba with Kizalofop. The plot to your left is uh, Kizalofop at 4 ounces to the acre plus dicamba plus Glyphosate, and the plot to your right is 6 ounces of Kizalofop to the acre plus plus dicamba plus glyphosate and one thing that we can see is that just like 2,4-D dicamba can also antagonize the activity of kizalofop especially at the lower rate of 4 ounces to the acre those corn plants are largely unaffected we were able to control the non-gmo corn because the glyphosate was in the mix but if glyphosate wasn't in the mix we probably wouldn't be able to control the non-gmo corn if you look at the 6 ounce rate Again, we're also able to control the non-GMO corn because of the addition of glyphosate. And because we're using a high rate of kizalofop, even with the antagonistic effect of dicamba, we're able to suppress the Roundup Ready corn to some extent. There's still some green plants, they're probably going to survive, but it was uh, a slightly better response than uh, kizalofop at 4 ounces to the acre. Another herbicide that is known to antagonize clatodin efficacy is acetochlor or warrant. If you look at the plot on your left here, we have 4 ounces of clatodin to the acre plus 48 ounces of acetochlor. And one thing that we can clearly see here is that acetochlor reduced clatodin efficacy on volunteer corn. Uh, we still have a lot of green plants in this plot. Uh, we're not sure at this point if those plants are going to come back, if they're going to produce a corn ear, but definitely the control is lower than expected at this point in time 17 days after application if we look to the plot in uh, your right we can see that we have six ounces of clatodem to the acre plus 48 ounces of acetochlor warrant and one thing that we can see is that by adding the two extra ounces of clatodem to this treatment we're able to overcome that antagonistic effect of uh, acetochlor on the clatodem so most of those corn plants here are controlled. We still have a little bit of green in some of those corn plants, but we don't expect any of those corn plants to come back and produce a corn ear. So even though there was an antagonistic effect of acetochlor, we're able to overcome that effect by increasing the rate of clatodem. We also tested combinations of kizalofop at four and six ounces uh, with the acetochlor but we did not see the same response there. Uh, we did not see acetylchlor reducing efficacy of uh, kizalofop. The last set of plots that I would like to discuss with you guys today is the combination of both dicamba and acetylchlor with different rates of clatodem. Like we already discussed, both dicamba and acetylchlor can antagonize the activity of clatodem on the control of volunteer corn. So if you look at the plots, to your left here, we have 4 ounces of clatodem 
plus dicamba plus acetochlor. And as you can clearly see here, uh, we are still able to control the non-GMO corn because of the glyphosate that was added to that treatment. But both the Roundup Ready Liberlink stack and the Enlist corn are still alive. The, those plants are still uh, green and they're probably going to continue to grow and produce a corn ear and interfere with harvest. And even if you look at the plot uh, to your right here, where we have six ounces of clatodem to the acre, plus dicamba, plus glyphosate, plus acetochlor, uh, we can clearly see here that even at the six ounce rate, uh, we still have some green corn plants across the plot. Those plants are going to survive and probably they're going to produce a corn ear and interfere with harvest. So by combining both the acetochlor with dicamba, we get an even stronger antagonistic response of those products with the clatodem. And not even the higher rate of clatodem at 6 ounces was sufficient to overcome that antagonistic effect. So to wrap up our discussion for the day, a few factors that might influence volunteer corn uh, control with a CCA's inhibitor herbicide are corn height at the time of application, environmental factors such as water availability, like we discussed before, water stress plants are going to be harder to control with ACCA's inhibitor herbicides. Another factor is the volunteer corn trait. Are you trying to control a non-GMO corn? Or are you trying to control enlist less corn? Or a Roundup Ready uh, Liberty Link stack corn? That's going to influence the efficacy of the herbicides that you can use. And finally, you got to keep in mind that herbicides such as dicamba and 2,4-D can antagonize activity of both clatodem and kizalofop. Uh, on volunteer corn and also acetochlor can antagonize activity of clatodem on volunteer corn as well.